Well, I think like most people it started when I was a child. I think most children have a fascination with animals and nature. And so definitely that was me as a child. But then many people when they get older they lose this fascination with nature. But some people don't. And I think most biologists are the people that retain this kind of childlike curiosity and fascination with nature. And uh, also I just, I just love biodiversity and being outside in wild places. Well, uh, again, as a child I was always fascinated by the tropics. Like, for example, I used to watch old movies about Tarzan in Africa, and I thought that was uh, amazing, the jungle, eh? and all the, the interesting animals. And I raised tropical fish in an aquarium. I had a small aquarium in my room, and so I read a lot of magazine articles and books about tropical fish. And I would dream about these places where the fish come from, Amazon River, Congo River. Uh, and I never imagined I could go to see these places. Well, I, I think that ecological research the quality and the amount of the science in Latin America has increased tremendously in the field of ecology. So, <clears throat> some of that is bound to find its way into the policy arena. Um, we can do things to help that process. Uh, perhaps your online magazine is one such thing that can help. But I think just the quality and the amount of research is going to make some impact. <clears throat> and um, I know there are people who are very passionate about bringing their research into the policy arena. Some of the professors here at Maringa have been very successful with this. So we need more people to do this. Well, you don't want to repeat the mistakes that we make in the developed countries. So, the typical pattern of development and uh, impact to the environment is you have uh, rapid development with a lot of impact. This happened in Europe, but back in the 17 and 1800s, perhaps. It happened in North America in the 1800s and early 1900s. We destroyed a lot of, of habitat and species before people understood the need for biodiversity and the value of biodiversity. These impacts happen. Then when the country is more developed economically with more uh, education and science infrastructure, then people realize the value of nature. And cre we created, for example, in the U.S. national park system around 1900, a long time ago. And now we have wonderful national parks that are very well protected. That's not to say we don't have many impacts. We still do have impacts, many impacts. But my point is, there seems to be an evolution of societies, of economic development, and high impact to the natural ecosystems. And once a degree of wealth, uh, gross national product, for example, is achieved, then there's a big investment in conservation. 
So it's very difficult for a developing country, uh, for example, in a tropical region, we could say Africa, for example, to move from where they are now to a developed economic state where everyone enjoys more prosperity and at the same time conserve their biodiversity, their natural resource, their natural capital. But this is our challenge. This is our great challenge today. To find some formula to move more people into a better economic state, but not damaging the, the natural resources and the biodiversity. And I don't have an answer for this. I'm not sure anybody has an answer for this. It's a huge problem. Well, I, they're very similar to the, the previous generation. I think people are the same every generation. So there always are some uh, students who are very passionate and committed and they continue in the profession and they are very productive. And then there are some people who unfortunately lose the commitment along the way and don't continue. And we see this in every generation of students. I think the key for success, for productivity, is passion, hard work. Just passion and hard work. You don't have to be um, a genius, like a mathematical genius. Um, I don't believe this. I think the people who succeed and make contributions are the ones that have just a strong passion for what they're doing. That's the key. Well, there's, I mean, Choose any problem you want, environmental problem, and we need ecology to help address the problem. So climate change, the implications of climate change for natural systems, for biodiversity, that include natural resources that humans depend on. Actually, the biosphere depends on living organisms. We wouldn't have oxygen in our atmosphere without plants, right? So the biosphere is, a, as we know, it's a very interconnected, complex system involving living organisms. So that's what ecologists study. Ecology is essential. So I could probably list 20 different environmental problems where ecology is essential. We need ecologists. Average citizen may not understand this, but they need ecologists. And the class you saw, ecology is all. Is it's everything. everything. Medicine, yeah. global atmosphere, ocean productivity for fisheries, forest productivity, Everything is ecology. Everything that's alive involves ecology because every living thing has an environment and every living thing interacts with other living things. This is ecology. Um, do you think it makes ecology uh, hard, difficult? Yes, ecology is a difficult science. It's, it's not for timid people. Some people believe, uh, for example, astrophysics is a very complex, difficult field of science, or neurophysiology, or genetics is very complex and difficult. I would say ecology is equally difficult. We deal with great complexity, great variation in, in the systems we study, great complexity. And our challenge is to simplify that complexity in a way that we can make successful predictions. So it's a great challenge. Yes, I agree. But that makes it interesting, huh? Yes. 
if everything was easy to understand, easy to, to demonstrate, it would not be interesting. Uh, well, I think I already told you, passion, they have to be passionate about what they're studying and what they're trying to, to learn. Um, and hard work. So I said it before, I'll say it again. Passion and hard work. And about the statistical? Uh, it's not... Anyone can learn math. Many students, young students, will tell me, oh, I'm not very good at math. And I said, that's ridiculous. Everyone can do math. It's just logic, and the human brain is designed to do logic. Now, of course, some people have a great talent for math, but everyone can do math. So it's a, it, that is just a matter of attitude. If you tell yourself you're no good at this activity, then probably you won't be. So don't tell yourself these things. That's the key. Uh, so things I remember as notable things? Well, um, one of my favorite research projects was the um, surveys we did in the Casaquiari River in southern Venezuela. This was a series of expeditions over a number of years. and. I, I look back at this now as some of the best experiences of my entire life because these expeditions were like almost like going back in time because this region is so remote. There's no infrastructure, no roads. Very few people live in the region, just a few indigenous villages. And so you can imagine when you're doing these expeditions for biodiversity surveys that you could be in uh, 1800. It could be like 1800, like Humboldt yeah. in the same region. The region looks the same, the same as Humboldt experienced. That's amazing. It's very rare to find this kind of environment on planet Earth today. There's so many people, so much development. So to have that opportunity for me was just amazing. And similar. Hey, Professor. Hi, Professor. Hey. I'm sorry. We're doing an interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can edit that for me. <laughs> Similar to the, the year I spent in Africa with my wife, when uh, actually we were newly wed, newly married, and we went to Zambia to work on food web ecology and fisheries ecology in the Zambezi River. And that was an amazing experience, similar to what I described of the Kasakiari. So, these, for me, are the favorite experiences that uh, are etched in my mind just because of the unique locations and the biodiversity, amazing biodiversity. And I hope we don't lose these opportunities for, for people in the future, that the next generation can experience yeah. places like this. I yeah. yeah. So, that's... Mm -hmm.